Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Pastor George is here. He's got some more good things about living in the overflow. I like the overflow. Oh, Gloria. I've lived there. in both places. <laughs> yeah. And overflow is better. You've lived in the overflow and you've lived in the underflow. Uh -huh. And the no flow. <laughs> and the no flow. <laughs> and the overflow is much better. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm so glad to be on the broadcast with you. Well, this is so much fun. We love having you, George. I just enjoy coming in and, and just talking the Word of God with we Sister Gloria. We just have Gloria. a great time. And we, this is really no different. You know, years ago, um, uh, the first time that I was running the organization, <laughs> I, I would, we would. When, whenever we have a job nobody wants to do or we don't know who to put there, we give it to George. <laughs> Let George do it. We don't have anybody to do it. <laughs> well, yeah, but he might not know what he's, well, he'll just have to learn. He'll figure it out. Yeah. And Gloria and I, years ago, we used to sit together in her office and we'd go over the business and in this department, that department. And then, but we would end up always talking about the Word. We talk about the move of the Spirit. We talk about yeah. Scripture. You preach to me. And so uh, we, now I've gotten to do this 322 times on this broadcast. Old times. It's, it is just, <laughs> it's wonderful to be able to do this with you, Gloria. Well, you're and a blessing. So we are, we're talking about living in the overflow. And, and we found out yesterday that we've been redeemed. You know, from the, I, when you say overflow, <laughs> I think about the opposite would be the underflow. Yeah. And the underflow would be where you're under just barely getting your nose up. Oh, That's out of the water. so true. <laughs> That's so true. That's not what we're supposed to do. <laughs> Show that to me again. What was that you were... <laughs> I'm trying to get my nose out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. But but being in that, we, we don't mean to laugh. I mean, it, but it's it's a joyful. That's the way it was. It's a joyful thing to to get out from under the water, You're to get out in. from barely barely being able to pay your bills and yes. and get by. That's no way to live. And I want to say this to you right now. Your days of living paycheck to paycheck are over. That's called underflow. That's the underflow. You live, you live in the overflow. We That's live right. in the overflow together. That's right. Amen. And so yesterday we were talking about, and just jump in here anytime you want, Gloria, because I enjoy it. But, okay. But yesterday we were talking about Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law so that we can live in the blessing of Abraham. Amen. And we went over to Deuteronomy 28 yesterday and we started reading through it and we got through, I think we got, we got through verse 10 and that's a great lead into what I want to talk about right now is Good. verse 11. Deuteronomy 28 verse 11. It says, and the Lord shall make you plenteous oh, yeah. in goods. I like that. In the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your cattle, in the fruit of your ground, in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers to give thee. And I want to take the time on this broadcast today talking about a surplus of prosperity. I was telling you <clears throat> a couple of days ago that in the nighttime, or really, whenever I have a moment just to, if I'm not focused on something else, to just think about, or at night when I'm laying in bed, as we talked about, mutter, mutter <laughs> the word, yourself. muttering it to yourself. Word, and I'll just, I'll just lay there and I'll start, I'll just start muttering to myself, I'm living in the overflow. Yeah. I am living in the overflow. And then the next line that I say, Gloria, is, I have a surplus of prosperity. Yes, that's right. I was reading through Deuteronomy 28 and I came across this verse 11 where it says, the Lord shall make you plenteous in goods. Mm -hmm. And I started meditating on that in God's desire for us to live in the overflow. And I thought about this scripture here. It's in your first section on number two, Psalm 35, 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Let them continually say, continually, let the Lord be magnified, which has pleasure, pleasure. in the prosperity Praise of God. his servant. Amen. So I'm he, a page. what's that? I'm missing a page. Surplus of prosperity. Oh, no, it's right here. Where? I was reading from right there. Oh, you started, okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so. Um, That's good. More than he, enough. It's more than enough. Excess. And he, he enjoys us living in that place of prosperity. And so he says here in verse 11 of Deuteronomy 28, the Lord shall make you plenteous in goods. Yes, amen. So Gloria, I did a little study on that. 
Before you start that, let me just make a point Yeah, go ahead, here. go ahead. Think about heaven. All right. You know, we got out here around the ministry, we got some black streets made out of gravel and black top. Yeah. They don't yeah. got any black top in heaven. They really don't. They got gold <laughs> streets. Yes, they do. For us to walk in. Yes, they think do. Think about it. That's, I am More thinking. than enough. More than we enough. We can get by with these black streets, but gold is more oh, than oh, enough. Oh, Gloria, Glory that is so God. true. I and like it. And you know it. what? You're talking about heaven. You know, a scripture that I've been thinking about lately is the one, I believe it's in Deuteronomy, that talks about days of heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And another scripture, thy will be done on earth as it is. As it is in heaven. Amen. There's an abundance in heaven. Oh, yeah. That he wants us to experience right here on earth. That's right. In heaven, there is no lack. There's no oh, insufficiency. That's not even heard of in heaven. It's not. It's mm -mm. not. There's an abundance of everything. So we, we are having days of heaven on earth. And just like you said, paving the streets with gold. Now, we need you know what? I, I tell you, there'd be a lot of people in the earth that would say, well, that's just excess. That's just excess. Streets of gold. Well, I guess God didn't think it was excess. No, He didn't. Since it's His house, His place. I was just getting tickled at watching you with your imitation of a cranky good, old woman. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just excess. That's just excess. <laughs> well, but God is a God of excess. He is. He loves to, I mean, Think about how much we love our children and how yeah. at Christmas time around our house, Excess. you cannot, you cannot <laughs> walk through the living room. Terry is so big about Christmas, though we, and it was wonderful. This last Christmas, we had all the grandchildren with us. We had all our kids and grandchildren, yeah. Jeremy and Aubrey, their spouses, grandchildren. We had a house full. Wow. And we made sure that when those kids went to bed, we made sure and, and I, we, what we do is on the third floor, third story of our house, we have a, a whole area that we can wrap presents and it's kind of a, you know, wrapping room. Storage area. And I, I'm, I don't know how many trips down two flights of stairs that I was making carrying packages after package after package. And when those kids woke up on Christmas morning, they were surrounded by the, the goodness of Nani right. and Poppy. Yeah. They were enjoying. And we love to see them do that. Sure. Well, how That's much the way more? The Lord is. How much more does our Heavenly Father want to bestow His goodness upon us? Of course. Well, who, who did He make it for? Who did He make all these he things? He made for? it for His us. Children. He made it for us to what? Richly enjoy. enjoy. Richly. To richly enjoy. enjoy. Amen. That's so good. He's saying here, the Lord shall make you plenteous in goods. And I looked up the word plenteous in the Hebrew and it means abundance. abundance. It means more than enough. It mm -hmm. means, and here, here's the word you were just talking a moment ago, excess. Excess. Yeah. Excess. It means much left over. But Gloria, the difference between the world's excess and the believer's excess is we, we know how to handle that. We know what to do with it. We are tithers. We are yeah. givers. Yeah. We are always looking out for the needs of others. The, the excess is for us both to enjoy, but also to give so, yeah. and to bless and to sow into others' lives. Well, I looked at the word plenteous and you know, we get the word plenty out of yeah. that. More so, than enough. It, I, yeah, I, it's, I looked it up in a dictionary and it says the word plenty means a more than adequate supply. Amen. He doesn't want to, he's not a God, as we've said before, he's not a God of not enough. No. He's not a God of just enough. He is a God of more than enough. More, more and than he enough. He wants you to experience that more than enough. He wants you to get beyond paycheck to That's paycheck right. over into the place where you're paying what your else bills. Is, and, what, what other <clears throat> word could you say about that position? The blessing. The blessing. That's what the blessing is. That's right. We're reading about the blessing. We're reading yep. in the blessing. It says the Lord shall make you plenteous in goods. Uh -huh. He more will give you plenty, a more than adequate supply. That's right. And I like this. I looked up the word goods in Hebrew and it means it's a word that means prosperity. It means wealth. It Praise means good God. things. It means the best things. Hallelujah. The best things. So, and then I did this, Gloria. I looked at various translations of Deuteronomy 28, 11. 
And look at the message translation. Do you see that there? Yeah. Point? Mm -hmm. Yeah, message translation. God will lavish you. Lavish you. With good things. You know what this points out to me? It points out to me how much He loves us. Of course. Well, what do you do with <clears throat> your kids, George, and your grandkids? I would think we, you are a big lavisher. <clears throat> we are la we lavish. <laughs> we lavish. Yeah. We love to give to our kids. We love to give to our children. Yeah. That's a picture of God. That's, That's a picture right. of our Father. So it says, God will lavish you. To expand <laughs> or give in great amounts or without limit. Would that be a picture of Poppy? That would be George's, a picture of Poppy. George's Poppy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. That would be, that would be me. <laughs> that would be Terry. I had a pop like that. You did. He was pop. so good. Pop. pop. Pop lets you do some he let me take his truck to town to the movie and I didn't have a driver's license. Gloria, <laughs> Gloria whatever, Jean. Whatever I wanted to do. Did you drive by yourself or did you take friends yeah. with you? Well, sometimes I took friends. But, but you would drive without a license. <laughs> oh, and, yeah. And Pop would but let you do that. we're living in the country, you know. It's not like I was here in the city. Yeah. But he probably would let me do it in the city knowing Pop. No. <laughs> <laughs> my grandfather, my grandfather was, he was my role model as a grandfather. Every person ought to have a poppy or a pop. They need to. I'm telling and you. And my grandfather, listening. when he would take me shopping, uh, I guess I was doing this at a young age. I was really playing him because he would, we'd go into a big department store and I'd go to the toy section. Mm -hmm. And if I found a toy, I would stand there and I would stare at it until he came around. No fit, just <clears throat> stare. I just stare. <laughs> stare at it. And, and my grandfather, who was Italian, very thick Italian accent, he'd be standing there and he'd say, Giorgio. Giorgio. I, I look up at him. He says, you want that toi? I said, uh-huh. He said, I buy that for you. Isn't that sweet? Now that's <laughs> the kind of grandpa y'all have. That's the way the Heavenly Father is. <clears throat> yeah. He wants to bless us. And I, I thought about how, how, how Pop would let you Drive your oh, yeah. truck into town without a license. That reminded me, my grandfather, we had about 15 acres. He had 15 acres of, of wooded area that had these dirt roads that you could drive yeah. on. And he would let me drive his car. He had a 19, <clears throat> excuse me, a 1963 Ford Falcon station wagon. And he would let me drive that station wagon and I'd drive it all through the woods and I was, I was coming back to the garage. He had a garage that was set apart from the, the restaurant that they had. And I, I, he said, just put the car in the garage when you're done with it. I said, okay. So I'm driving it back. I've got to be like 12, 12 years old. So I'm driving the car <clears throat> into the garage. And all of a sudden from across the street, I see these two girls watching. And my head went over there. <laughs> and I was just... I was staring at the two girls and I drove into the side of the garage. <laughs> George, you didn't. <laughs> and my, my grandfather, Lord. my grandfather never got mad at me. He didn't? Until that day. Oh, until that day. <laughs> and I, I remember looking in the rearview mirror up and I could see my grandfather. Well, you know, George, I don't really blame you. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I hit, I was headed for the opening of the garage and I hit the little side of it. Close. <laughs> I got close to it <laughs> and I, I drove into it and I looked up into the rearview mirror and here comes my grandfather. He had kind of a limp, but he was running <laughs> with his limp and he's going, you stupid boy, <laughs> you stupid boy. And that, those words still <laughs> ring in your ears. <laughs> don't they? He said, you stupid boy. <laughs> And so my grandfather, but he, but he let me keep driving his car. That was, he was good. I put, I put a dent in that, that wooden garage. I, I lived with that for a long time. That's so. Anyway, that's a picture uh -huh. of the love of God. That is. I don't know if God's ever said you stupid boy <laughs> to me, but he just loves us so he much. He does, he does. He loves us so much. Gives to us. And so <laughs> God will lavish you with good things. That's the message. Everybody ought to have a grandpa like Pop. That's or what right. What did you call your granddaddy? Grandpa. Grandpa and Pop. But right, actually, just... sometimes I called him by his first name, Guillermo. Oh, what did that mean, Andy? <laughs> it's, it means in, in, in uh, English, it means Bill. Bill. <laughs> oh, Bill is shorter. His name was Guillermo Fiorello Bianco. 
sure. And I would call. You're sometimes. making that up. No, when I when I got older, I got in my teen years. I, I'd walk in the room and say, "Hey, Guillermo," and That's then sometimes like I would movie. call my I'd call my mother by her first name. I'd call her by her first name, but her first name was Cesarina. Well, in that. So I'd walk into a room. I'd say, "Hey, Chesie." Now we understand you more. <laughs> you really see where I'm coming from. <laughs> anyway, lavish you with good things, good things. In First John three one, it says, "How great is the love the Father has la lavished on us, that we should be called the yes, children of glory God." Glory to God. Isn't Hallelujah. He good? Mm. And then in the Bible, in basic English, it says, "The Lord will make you fertile in every good thing." The Lord Productive. will make you for Hey, that's a good scripture for couples that are believing for children. Yeah. The Lord will Give make them you that fertile. Reference again. In every good thing. That's Deuteronomy 28:11. And the word fertile in the Merrimack Webster edition means producing a large amount of something. A large amount of something. <laughs> like in Genesis 26, 12, Isaac planted crops in that land and the same year reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he became very, very wealthy. Very wealthy. Mm -hmm. very, I'm declaring over you today yes, that you it. are very wealthy. We all receive that, Pastor George. Very wealthy. Now, <clears throat> the... Um, the this translation, the I think, I think it's the extended Bible, the Lord will make you rich. See, it's clear. Yeah, it says it's that. very clear. And in the, the, the Pentateuch, it says, superabundance will the Lord give thee for good, for happiness and prosperity. Praise That's God. a commentary on that uh, verse there in, in verse 11. Superabundance will the Lord give thee for good, for happiness and super for prosperity. Abundance. So Praise I looked up God. the word superabundance in the dictionary, and it says superabundance is exceedingly or excessively abundant, more than sufficient. More than you can Overflow. Use. Hallelujah. Overflow. Well, then we get to this last part here, Gloria. Deuteronomy 28, 11, I found in the Amplified Translation, and this is what got me so excited. The Lord shall make you have a surplus of prosperity. I really, More really than enough. like that. A surplus of prosperity. Have you ever gone into a military surplus store? One of those... Are you kidding? One of I'm those... married to Kenneth, yes. <laughs> oh, that's true. Of course, of course. <laughs> and you go in there and the place is just jam-packed full of stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just, it's everywhere. There, you know, sometimes when we go to Arkansas, up to the prayer cabin, one of the things that Terry and I enjoy doing is we like going to antique shops and we like going into these places that are just, there's one place um, in, in Nashville that had, it is so jam packed with stuff. Terry and I went in there one day, there was a guy sitting there and he was so excited that customers had come and he started giving us a tour. And it was, there's no air conditioning in there. It was warm. It, it was very warm. But he took us through and it was just a pa it packed to the hilt, to the walls. I mean, up to the ceiling. Stuff was everywhere. A lifetime of packing up to the walls. And that's a surplus. Yeah. That's, more than, that's more than anybody would ever need. But that's the picture of what God wants to do for us. He says, mm -hmm. I want to give you a surplus more of prosperity. More than enough. The blessing of Abraham includes a surplus of prosperity. Yes, And amen. there's your definition. You were talking to me earlier about, let's define surplus. Go ahead, Gloria. Give us the An definition. An amount that is more than what is needed. Mm-hmm. Excess, extra, leftover, overflow. That's I like it. that word, overflow. And then I happened to put a quote in there by one Gloria Copeland. Oh, yeah. And, Where uh, does the surplus come from? It comes from the blessing working on your behalf. It works and it works and it keeps working. In other words, mm -hmm. when you get enough, if you're still walking in the blessing, it'll just keep yeah. adding to you, yeah. adding to you. I like it. And that's what he wants to do. He wants us, Gloria, to live in a place, again, yes. where we, we give our tithes, we give generous offerings, we pay our bills, and we have much left over. Amen. Surplus. Amen. There's that's a surplus. what the, uh, what is that, the Amplified, what is that PC, the Amplified 
something. PC. Oh, Amplified Classic. Okay, yeah. that's Amplified the one classic. that says m more than more than enough. More than enough. Excess. Well, the excess. That's what that's what that surplus is, and the Lord wants us. See, Lord, there's a lot of pressure that's connected with lack. There's a lot of pressure that's connected with deadlines. Oh, pressure. you're not kidding. People have bills. Bills that pile up, <sighs> and that is no way to live. No. The way that God has called us to live is that every bill be paid, every debt be wiped out, On time. everything be supplied. There are people right now that, that have taken out uh, college loans. I'll, I'll tell you this. We were, Terry and I were talking to someone the other day. Uh, we got into a, a, a store and we're talking to somebody that worked there and they just started talking to us. And <clears throat> we were amazed because we looked at this person and she was, she said she's 41 years old and she looked like she was 21. It was really amazing. But she told us, she said, I still, she said, I'm still paying on my college tuition that I borrowed for. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people that are doing That's that. Right. There are a lot of people that have built up mortgages and, and the stress that that causes. Yeah. And I'm telling you today, it is the will of God for us to live in such an overflow that there right. is more than enough more to than take enough. care of whatever need there is. Amen. And that this lifestyle of paycheck to paycheck or even offering to offering in a ministry, that, that we are going beyond that, Gloria. We are flying, we are flying right by that because Praise it is God. the will of God for us to live in the blessing. Amen. And I like, I, I've lived in both places. I've lived in... You've Poverty, lived, lack, yep. and I've lived in the blessing more than enough. More than enough. You can figure that one out, can't you? I mean, there's no comparison. <laughs> Life and peace and blessing. That's and right. Plenty of food and plenty of Christmas yep. and glory to God. Wow. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.